My name is George Guarino, uh, Real George, some people know me as. I was kind of prominent in the very early 80s, trying to promote local bands, particularly bands doing original music. When did that for a bunch of years. Now I'm in the area as a clinical hypnotist. I love doing working with people. Welcome to Real George's Back Room. Yeah, I was in bands and I wanted to be in a band, but I wasn't particularly good or anything. Well, what could I do to help support them? You know, what could I do to be in the mix? Doing some video might be a, a step to help them. You have to remember back in 1981, that was right when MTV was about to happen. I think they started in August of 81. Here it is, a music television show. Everybody's excited. First time I, this down. I just want to be part of this in some way. My brothers, uh, Jim and Gene, we had a band together and they told me about the possibility of being a DJ in WRPI. Phone call came in, does anybody at WRPI want to uh, DJ at Club 288? One of these cool guys, you know, that's been at RPI forever, they're gonna pick this up and go do it, it's not for me. So I go away, come back the next week, and the notice is still on the board. I'm like, well, nobody's gonna do anything with this, I'm gonna call them. So it was really, really fun and adventurous, bringing my video stuff and like, you know, videotaping people on the dance floor and then projecting it on a little TV, and that was a big deal. What were you going to do with the music video? Nobody knew what to do with the music video. Everybody was just figuring it out. I'm making my local documentaries of people performing, and then I did make some music videos for some of the local bands. Equipment was always a problem. I never had good equipment. My stuff was VHS. It was so crude. I remember up at the Chateau Lounge, and that was another place where we used to videotape a lot. I have this great footage of Fear of Strangers. No sound at all, because the cord isn't plugged in properly or something. There was one little festival that happened locally, and I went there and videotaped the various bands, and that was probably my first show. Gene Guarino here with The Back Room. We're here with Vinny from J.B. Scott's production. Hi, Vinny. Various people that I knew from the scene would be there, and we'd be doing interviews with them, what they thought of the bands, you know, what they thought of just the scene, and people like the ADs, you know, Jim Furlong locally. You know, he's, he's always been in the scene and always done a great job, and he's got a, a real passion for what he does. Public access was one of, like, the first channels. It was, like, zero or one or two. So it's like almost everybody is getting an opportunity to see these things. You know, I'm in people's homes all around here, you know, putting this stuff out and showing them what's going on in downtown Albany. We're here with Real George's back room at Lark Beat Records for the video opening. We have, uh, hey, who's this on the video? And people were very interested in watching music videos for some reason. It had never been done before. In the beginning, I'm creating most of the pieces, and I'm grappling with what, how can I fill up this time. Probably after about a year, there was many, many more times when particularly the alternative labels, the, uh, the indie labels, would send us videos and just say, oh, if you'd like to play them, you can play them. Because, there was, you know, where else are they going to show these things? At that time, I did have this part-time job at a print shop. So, you know, there I was able to print like a one-page flyer, you know, letting people know about when my show is going to be on, who's going to be on it. And that became the Buzz magazine after a bunch of years. A friend of mine, Michael Diger, he was very instrumental in helping me with the, the design and the ads. We started off from scratch each and every time. The Ramones, they had the band, I know they had R.E.M. They were very passionate about it. But then you began to realize that people were expecting this, and then it became more of a job to be making sure that it happened. You know, if I didn't have these things, we probably wouldn't have been able to interview people like Trent Reznor or R.E.M. or 10,000 Maniacs, things like that. 288, I know it was a local bar to begin with. They really brought more of an art kind of a feel to it, the idea of a bands performing their own music. Well, after the buzz uh, stopped existing, because there was a point where the advertiser was just paying for the, the printing. What do I want to do? There's a guy across the street from me where I live, and he had a license plate that said trance on it. What's that all about? And he says, bring over a pizza and a Pepsi, and I'll tell you all about it. So I go over to his house across the street, and he starts talking to me. And then he says to me, do you want to do a session? And I'm going, I, I don't want to be hypnotized. I don't be out of control. I don't want to, you know, all the things you think about hypnosis. But I'm like, okay, I'm safe, I'm across the street. So I went to their convention and I bought some books and you start learning. The musical background led me to this, you know, it led me to this. My real interest right now is to connect hypnosis and art, using art as a focal point for a trance experience and to share this with a lot of people. <laughs> These local bands, I really admired them. I really wanted to 
champion some of them. Stay, Stay tuned, tuned for, for more of Real, Real George's Back Room. It made Albany a place to be, because you're not going to have this going on in Lake George or, or Saratoga or something like that. That's why it was really important. Oh, 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 oh,